Tanya is based on the idea that there are two souls. We have a godly soul and an animal soul. They kind of have different agendas. Animal soul likes what feels good now, and the godly soul is intellective, and it, it appreciates the greatness of Hashem, or what matters, etc. So they hang out in different parts of the body. I don't know if you've ever noticed you have some conflict in yourself. So the uh, animal soul hangs out in the um, heart, in the left side, filled with blood, just like the blood travels from the heart, then even goes to the brain to think about things. So you have desires. Everybody innately, I don't know, we like pleasure. So Hashem made everyone, even animals, this way. This food will make you feel good, or the heat will make you pain. It's very necessary for survival as well. The only problem is that desires can become addictions if they're not. Like you were saying, you've got to use your head to balance yourself. So the animal may have actually a very good mind. Some animals, as we were saying before, are actually in mathematically even smarter than humans. Bees can do math better than supercomputers. And in fact, they actually communicate with a certain dance to the other bees where these flowers are. So very, very good mathematical brains, which is quite amazing. But everything is run by how does it make me feel now? Do I want it? It's all instincts. Whereas the godly soul is the opposite. This is what makes a human being unique, is that we can think independent of desires. In fact, the only mammal that has a prefrontal lobe is the human. Even apes can be very smart, but they're still an ape. But a human can start to think, why do I exist? And they can see the greatness of Hashem, and then they can even fall in love with Hashem. They can have Yiras Hashem, they can Avas Hashem. These are great things. Now, the idea then travels to the heart. So your idea begins in the mind, the godly soul is in the mind, and then it travels down to the heart. As Tanya will say, we're always in a conflict between these two things. We see it in many things in life, even dieting. I know I shouldn't eat that chocolate cake, but sometimes I do, right? Because the heart gets stronger than the mind. And so this is, um, as al Treb will say, the, the innate ability that a human being has is to control themselves. And this is really the whole idea of Hasidus and, and, and davening, which is that Basically, in order to control yourself, you need two things. You need to want to control yourself, and then you have to control yourself. So that's the idea of davening, that you arouse a love for Hashem. The whole idea of Yiddishkeit, the Altar says, you have moments of inspiration. So then you can have moments of perspiration. You can't have perspiration if you don't have inspiration. So we're meant to talk, uh, delve into the Kedusha of davening. Shabbos of the day is davening. Delve into it feel something, and then when it comes the rest of your day, let's say you're in work, and it's a question of ethics, a question of doing this, a question of that, you already have the motivation, you have the Ava Hashem, the love of Hashem that's coming down, so the heart may be saying this, but the mind that says something else already, now it's just up to actually disciplining yourself, no, I love Hashem so much, I'm going to do it, as later in time you'll give us various uh, meditations, etc. Lechayim v'levrachah.